Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. Hey, how's it going? It's going very well. Thank hey, you. Hey, you know what? Failure is part of life. Did you know that? It's certainly a big part of my life. Yeah, I've had some failures as well, but the important thing is, no matter how many times you fall, let's say you fall 30 times, you got to get up 31. Yeah. So today on the show, if you haven't failed enough, perhaps you're not living hard enough. We'll tell you more next. Hi there, welcome to our show. This is Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. Corvair Ronnie. Hope you're having a splendid day. Thanks for tuning in today. You know, people who fail a lot are living life right. I know, I know what you're saying. Lou, what the f hell are you talking about? <laughs> so you're, you're saying that if, like, if somebody had a tough time week after week after week getting their YouTube show live, uh -huh. then they're li those guys are living right. No, those guys are failures. <laughs> See, as for those who don't fail at all, they're not living hard enough. We're living hard enough. We're just failing. <laughs> Everybody has got failures, uh, an insider tells us. If you see people with success, you're looking at their shiny front. <coughs> we don't see how many failures it took for them to be like that. A talented tailor, for example, can alter clothes perfectly in no time at all, but they don't reach that level of skill overnight. Uh, there's a lot of training, practice, and most importantly, failure. It's like we talk about in NASCAR, Ronnie, with drivers that are relatively new to the circuit, they need to get what we call seat time. Yeah, there's a pretty steep learning curve there. Well, you know, when yeah. you're going 210 miles an hour down a backstretch and you got to turn left all of a sudden, uh, you might want to have a little experience yeah. under your belt. Yes. Yeah. Don't try this at home. No. Uh, so this psychologist says, there's a lot we don't see. If you don't look at your own life, what are the things you've bounced back from? And everybody's bounced back from some pretty big setbacks before. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, you look, if you look at the person you are today, she said, that would tell your younger self uh, if you could be, you know, mm -hmm. if that could be. What would they be proud of? What demons are they proud of for con of conquering? How have you grown as a person? Uh, I think that's something we don't celebrate or champion enough. Yeah, there's such a thing as taking that a little bit too far in celebrating every little thing. Right. But when well, you do reach a goal, you know, it's a good idea to reflect back and think on mistakes you made along the way and how you got there. Don't just give yourself a participation trophy for exactly, trying. Exactly, Ronnie. Yep. Real wisdom comes from experience. Yep. It's not just hiding behind a book. I want to know you know what it's like to be human, this insider says, because it's very easy to say just do X, Y, Z, but to actually know what it's like to push yourself through something in your darkest times and the times you're unmotivated is another thing altogether. Yes, so under the failure hashtag on Instagram, there are nearly 1.5 million posts. Mm, half of those are mine. <laughs> so there's a few there's a few failures out there. Many of them include motivational quotes from argu arguably uh, successful people like Bill Gates, Michael Jordan, and John Rockefeller. Uh, Thomas Edison once said, I failed my way to success. Yeah. Uh, uh, we And... Uh, what were we talking about? Uh, WD-41? Right. I mean, sorry, WD-40? <laughs> WD right. 41. What is... New and improved. Yeah, WD is water displacement. Right. 40 was the 40th attempt yeah. to get it right. And they did. So and there were 39 that didn't work so good. Yeah. 39 stumbling blocks. <laughs> yep. But, you know, they're merely hurdles. Right. When you're taking an optimistic approach. People who repress their vulnerabilities and their failures tend to be the ones who are the most unpalatable because they believe showing them makes them weak. Yeah. Ah, you got to be careful. You know, sometimes showing your vulnerability to somebody makes them feel that they can take advantage of you in some right. way because perhaps they know a weakness. Kind of a, kind of a slippery slope. It is. To, don't cross that line. They are the people who can be the most cruel. When you can own the different chapters of your life, even if initially you feel a little embarrassed, 
the more integrated you are as a human being and the more authentic you are. Uh, learning to embrace failures makes you more comfortable with yourself. Everybody has things they're not good at and has made decisions in the past they're not proud of. But if we push them, them down and pretend they don't exist, it can build this resentment inside yeah. of us. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not good at backing a trailer. I, oh. I'm just not very good at it. It's yeah. It must be a whole left brain, right brain thing. Because yeah, you to, turn left to go right. Yeah, right it's, to go left it's, and... it's weird to me. And occasionally at my work, they'll have me load up the trailer. And we have these <clears throat> uh, little sport utility vehicles. Oh, they're, yeah, yeah. They're kind of like... Quads. Uh, they're quads, basically. But they're built big enough for two full-grown adults to sit in. Uh, they're very cool. They're made by Polaris, to give them a shameless plug. Um and anyway, we have to take them in for service. And whoever the you know next man up is, that's who gets to drive the vehicle with the trailer on it, with the Polaris attached. And I, I sweat about it. Mm -hmm. Because if it's someplace I've never been, I don't know, I may have to end up pulling in and backing the trailer out. Uh, I did it one, t one place. I couldn't get the thing out of there. I unhooked the trailer. <laughs> I turned the vehicle around. And then I spun the trailer around, hooked the trailer back up to the vehicle. I don't think that's the way it's supposed to work. It's not supposed to work that way, but that's the way it works for me. You know, one time I uh, went fishing with my father-in-law, and he had a boat and a pickup truck to pull it. And um, for whatever reason, he said to me, you know, you drive today. Uh -huh. I thought, oh, okay, sure. So I drive to the lake, and then all of a sudden I realized, wait a minute. i got to back this thing in. Yeah. And I got to back it. And, and this was at a time when the water was relatively low. Oh, so Back in the drought days. Yet. Yep. So that, you know, the boat ramp was even further down. I couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't even back it down straight. It kept going like this. Yep. I, it just, I don't know. And I think you probably have the same problem I do. The movements of the steering wheel are supposed to be very, very small. Yeah. And I always think, well, if this much is good... This much is better. It gotta be better. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. All right, so let's talk about some rules here about learning to embrace failure. Number one, accept who you are. It's a question of do you really want to make the effort? If not, then just accept that you need help or you're just crap at something. Backing a trailer. Exactly. There's no shame in saying you're bad at directions or have no creative talent whatsoever, Puppet Master. But if we dwell on it and see it as a shameful thing, then we beat ourselves up over it. The person you see who seems to have a perfect life, well, maybe they do, or maybe they're just great at certain things and crap at other things like you. Just like you have natural strengths and you have skills you've picked up along the way. Yep. And, you know, experience, it gets right back to that again. And also, know your limitations. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this next one, number two, is accept what you need to work on. Uh, your life isn't going to end just because you can't park a car or back a trailer. But if failing at it over and over again is causing you anguish, then do something about it. Mm -hmm. Either you learn how to do it or you don't. Uh, I mean, I've learned to, boy, I can, I can back a vehicle up like nobody's business. I can park, I got a big old Tundra crew cab. I can back that thing into a spot that you just wouldn't think you could fit a Honda Accord into. Mm -hmm. And and it's just through working on it over and over and over again. And we do a lot of, in the Sheriff's Department, we have a, a course that we have to go through. It's called an EVOC course. It's for emergency vehicle operation course. And part of it is backing. Uh, you have to learn to back. And then part of it is parking. And I'm sure the reason we have to take the course is some captain's secretary backed into somebody's car at one point. And so <laughs> because we're self-insured, we all have to take a parking course. For every action, there's an immediate yes. reaction. Yeah. And so uh, through multiple, I'm talking, we do it for hours at a time where we parallel park. And... You learn exactly where your rear axle needs to be and how it swings. They call it rear end cheat. You learn exactly how to swing that front end. And to where, man, when I get downtown and I have to 
park at a you know at a meter or something, mm -hmm. I don't even sweat it. Yeah, I don't even sweat it. Yeah, I'm pretty good at it. Uh, I'm obviously not as good as you. I don't practice, but uh, all right. So failure is what we're talking about today. Failure teaches you what to simplify in your life. And you know, Ronnie, I have to say, not that we aren't open to learning new things, but when you get to be this age, you tend to be a little stuck in your ways. Right. You know, and, and the reason for that is because that's what's worked for you. Right. Um, and, and if it didn't, you would have changed it along the way somewhere, right? Well, you know, and, and for me, my brain is a hard drive. If some new information comes in, yeah, some old information is getting lost. It has to go out. So I'm just, I'm, I'm afraid that point is going to come when, uh, you know, I learn something new and then I forget how to tie my shoes. Well, the perfect example is your cell phone number. I can yes. never remember what my cell phone number yeah. is. Yeah, and I get asked for it a lot. You know, it's like, uh, I don't call my number very often. I don't know. Yeah. Well, what's your wife's number? Really? I don't know what my wife's phone number is. I no. just push a button. Right. We don't do that anymore. No. I used to have probably 20 kids' phone numbers memorized. Yeah. Never used a phone book. All my buddies, all my, any girlfriends I had knew their numbers right off the bat. Now, you don't need to, you don't need to no. know them anymore. Do you remember your phone number from when you were a kid? Absolutely. I don't. I remember 481. Yeah. Uh, 497946. Wow. But you know what's long disconnect. You're welcome to give it a call. Yeah, area code nine one six. Ask for Ronnie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, when we fail at something, it can be a simple indication. It's something that doesn't work for you, and maybe you should just cut it loose. When you want to pick up something or work towards a goal, sometimes you get caught up in the nitty gritty, and we buy fishing in the dark. Uh, and we buy 10,000 programs and courses online and do everything. But think of it as evolution. It's not just about becoming more complex. It's also in terms of simplifying a system. It's basically refining a process. Essentially, failure is a form of intel. That's one of your cop words. It is. Yeah. It tells you what you're good at and what you're not so good at. Yep. And I, I was just saying, you know, know your limitations as a person. Don't be afraid to challenge yourself to learn something new. But if you can't pick it up, you just can't. Right. You know, it doesn't make you stupid. No. It just makes you maybe a little more unique from other people who can or can't do the hey, same thing. Both of us play guitar. Right. Neither of us will be Eddie Van Halen. No. No, so that's true. we have learned the guitar to a certain point and mm -hmm. we're pretty happy with it yeah. at that point. We don't really need to learn. I mean, I, I teach myself new songs all the time. Right, I know. But I don't need to become any more proficient right. at the songs we've been doing for 40 years. Exactly. I'm pretty happy with the, the way those songs are. Yeah, you know, and, and that's and that's the thing. We, we've we played together for so long that we know each other yeah. and what the other's going to do and when it's time to sing and when it's time to harmonize. And What's so funny, so we went, uh, I'll turn this a little bit personal, we went and saw Sammy Hagar in concert the other night. And he came right out and said that it's been a while since his band, it's called The Circle, Sammy Hagar and The Circle, uh, and they're amazing, by the way. Uh, Josh Bonham on the drums. Yeah. Uh, Vic Johnson on guitar and Michael frickin' Anthony on bass. Mm -hmm, from Van Halen. Van, Van Halen. So you got absolute incredible musicians. But he said it's been a while since they toured. So being a musician and being in a band, I could tell he was absolutely right. Because what do we do when we're not sure exactly how the song's going to go? You start looking at the other guys in the band. Right. Because you're looking for a cue, right? And somebody's gonna nod, or or they'll flash you a one or a two more. Or Ronnie something. and I have this down too, yes. by the way. And so they were doing that. Uh -huh. They were absolutely doing that. Uh, I you could tell that they've absolutely practiced how to end the song, right? But there was some of the stuff in the middle where you know they're gonna solo for a minute. Somebody, Sammy nods off stage, and somebody runs a guitar out to him. Uh -huh. And then he just starts doing a little solo. So it's, there is that. I mean, you know, you're, I don't know. I, I guess 
the bottom line here is everything is a lesson. Taking the result from what you got from the test and analyzing it, working out to see what you're going to do about it. Uh, we carry our perceived and real failures over, overthink it in our heads. So there's a lot of anger and anxiety and anxiety. Yeah. While forgiveness allows us to let it go. Right. Uh, Again, it doesn't make you less of a person. No. If you realize you can truly forgive yourself and know that your inadequacy uh, doesn't own you anymore, it's very unlikely that any mistakes you make at work, that anybody, I mean, unless it's some huge gaffe, that anyone's going to remember two weeks from now. But if you carry it around with you and can't let it go, it'll eat you away inside. It makes me think... um, Again, a little bit on a personal note. When I when I used to do uh, music radio as a disc jockey, uh, a song has what we call an intro, musical intro, before the vocal kicks in. And every song varies slightly. Some are three seconds, some maybe 22 seconds. And that's the time allotted for the disc jockey to get in what he has to say. And what we call that vocal is the post. And in radio, you want to try to hit the post so that you do not step on the vocal. Yeah. And I can tell you, when a new song comes out, you listen to it a couple of times before you do it, and you, you think you have it down. But sometimes you step on that post. And I can remember when I would do that, maybe in the first half hour of my show, it would ruin my day. <laughs> ruin. I would let it just ruin my day. And when you think about it, who really cares? Right. No one cares. Yeah. You know? I'll tell you what's really a crime. I don't know. Way back in the day when you used to try to record music off, uh-huh. of the, off the radio. Yeah, I remember. So you would push play and record at the same time and started the music as already. And then the disc jockey would come on and say like, hey, this is 96.9, The Eagle, and this is Journey. And right. Like, God damn it. Yeah. I, I can't use that one. Why didn't you? Why didn't you? Why did you just... Not talk. Just play the song. Come on. The best ones were where they played like song to song to song, like right. three in a row yeah. with no interruptions and they didn't say anything. A sweep. Yes. And then you got a couple songs you can use. Um, I know uh, it. it is just, it's for some people that are perfectionists, it's hard to get over making any mistakes. Yeah. And trust me, again, you're probably the only one that really cares about all your minute little mistakes. Mm -hmm. If you keep your mistakes small, no one's going to care. Yeah. Well, we hope that you've learned something today. Um, In life, everybody has failures. Yeah. Um, And everyone will continue to have failures based on decisions that they make. But the point is, it's all about how you bounce back. Yep. And what you learn and what you take from your mistakes slash failures. All right, we'd love to hear from you in the comments below. As you know, we we try to be very active with everybody that takes time to leave us a comment. Uh, We'd love to know where you're watching the program from. Don't be afraid to leave that. I mean, you don't have to put 451 Michigan Avenue. (laughs) That's not what we mean. Yeah, Michigan would be fine. Yeah. Uh, But we'd love to see where people are watching around the country and around the world, for that matter. Uh, We hope that you'll check out our website, menaresosmart.com. On there, you'll find, oh, man, pictures, videos. Our Madison Draft. Blogs. Blogs, yeah. Lots of stuff to see and do on our website. Once again, that's menaresosmart.com. Hey, if you're up to it, you haven't already done it, subscribe to our channel. That's very easy, too. Yep. There's a subscribe button down there, and when you click that, uh, if you'd like, click the bell as well, and that way you'll get notifications each time a new show comes out. And our schedule, our programming note here is that our schedule has changed slightly, and so we are having shows on Tuesday, Thursday, and then Sunday morning Mass. Okay, yeah, look, it's, <laughs> it's a little iffy at this point. <laughs> Here's where we're supposed to be. My frustration <laughs> level is up here. Okay. Well, you know what? It's because you're a ne'er-do-well. I am a ne'er-do-well. Yeah. And I'm full of shenanigans. <laughs> and, All right. and tomfoolery. Yeah. All right. We worked in ne'er-do-well. <laughs> that was our challenge word this week. All right. I'm Lou Gallagher. Corvette Ronnie. And we would love to see you on the next episode 
of Men Are So Smart.